the 10 worst things you can do to your skin and what to do about them. Hi, I'm Laura Ray. I want to say right up front, I've done all of these. So you are amongst a friend if you have done any of these before. But when I changed these things, my skin changed. But as products evolve, as new information comes out, I keep tweaking things. And I'm finally at a point where I'm really happy with my skin. So I wanna share with you some of the products that I use and what I do about these mistakes. One of the biggest mistakes I ever made was not thoroughly cleansing my face. Until I started learning about double cleansing, I don't think my face was ever fully clean. I love cleansing balms, cleansing oils. I never thought with my oily skin in the past that I would ever use any kind of oil on my face for anything. And you'll hear me throughout this video talk about some oils that have worked great for me. Right now my skin is combination, but I go through periods of time when my skin is dry because of vitamin A and what I'm using on my skin. But right now I would say I'm in a pretty comfortable place where I have combo skin. But I love using this cleansing balm that so many of you recommended to me, the e.l.f. This is so smooth. It's their Holy Hydration Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm. I really like this. You see, I've used quite a bit of it. I have maybe seven or eight cleansing balms that I've been trying out, looking at the texture, how they feel, how much they get off of my skin. I heard about this one from Painted by Spencer. I did a whole video where I tried out some of his little tricks for smooth, beautiful skin. It is amazing. The LMS Cleansing Balm, the Pro Collagen, well, it is super pricey. This small one costs around $17. But I do have to say, it feels amazing. If you just want to try it for that spa experience, everything in it just feels so moisturizing. I like to do what he said is put this on and leave it on like a mask. That way too, I feel like I'm getting a better deal out of this and just let it really moisturize my face. When I wash this off, my skin feels so hydrated. I do feel it's more hydrated than the e.l.f., even though they call it holy hydration. I do feel this is a bit more hydrating. But both of these work great at getting the makeup off the skin. As far as the second cleanse, I've tried so many cleansers. One that I love right now is from Alana Mitchell. This is her Daily OC Cream Cleanser. This is so creamy, so beautiful on the skin, very moisturizing. I love the scent of it. It smells like you're in a field of oranges. And I just really feel it gets my face super clean. I never get a dry feel from this. So this is what I like to do is go in first with the cleansing balm, rinse, and then go in with some kind of cream cleanser. One of the things I loved when I was a teenager and even into my 30s and 40s, when I would go to the dermatologist, everything they told me was very simple, a couple of steps. And I never really felt overwhelmed by any of the treatments that they put me on. I found that after I cleanse, I need an essence. An essence is great for hydrating the skin because one of my mistakes that a lot of us make is using too many products on the skin and then your skin just gets overwhelmed. So I go in with the Essence. I love the Numbuzzin toner. The Essence toner gives so much glow and hydration. Most of the time, I don't even need a moisturizer, especially this time of year I'm going into in Florida. We've got so much humidity that this is enough for me. And then I go in with the uh, Numbuzzin 3 Skin Softening. This has just made my overall skin texture a lot smoother. I feel like my fine lines are less noticeable. This is so affordable, and I love that about it. Now, on the nights that I'm using a vitamin A, I use the Red Dermic from La Roche-Posay. This is a retinol to hide. I feel that that works better on my skin than just a regular retinol. I also use the eye cream version of it, but I do this about every mm, 
third night or so, so it's not something I'm wearing all the time. It is very cost effective that way. I'm not going through this that quickly. So on the nights that I'm using that, I don't use anything else on my skin. And I just sort of skin cycle through these products and keep things very simple. Back when I was younger, there weren't all these exfoliators. And I, I would say I didn't do any exfoliating really on my skin besides a buff puff. Remember those? That's what the dermatologist told me to use when I get these huge flakes from the medication that I was on. I was on tretinoin at one point. I was on heavy doses of benzoyl peroxide mixed with sulfur. So I would have these huge flakes of skin coming off and I would just gently take a buff puff and sort of get that off. Well, now there's just so many amazing exfoliators and I think that has just been life-changing for my skin. I've talked about using gommage. Now, a lot of people think gommage is a scam and they go, well, look, you could put it on glass and it balls up. Yes, but it stays white. When I put it on my skin, what my friend has explained to me that's an esthetician is when I'm rolling that off, if it's a tan or a darker brown, you know that your skin mixed with it that you're getting it off. And I could just see such a difference. My skin looks just clearer and brighter using a gommage. And there are many affordable ones out there. This one's super affordable from Misha. It's her Super Aqua 10 Hyaluronic Acid Ultra Hyaluron Peeling Gel. Wow, that's a lot to say. I do this maybe once a week, and this just keeps that surface skin from uh, laying on my skin and looking dull. I have a couple other exfoliators that I want to tell you about. This one from Dermalect. I just started using this recently. This is just a clear serum. So you are not having to do any manipulating on the skin. What I love to do with this, because it's got several different acids, is take a little Q-tip and go around the edges of my lips where I have fine lines. That has really helped them. Also, I'll go in around the eye down here, any little fine lines, just with a Q-tip because I don't like getting products like this very close to my eyes. So I'm very careful with that. But this is another one that's an exfoliator while you sleep. It just sort of gets that dead skin loose. And when you go to wash your face, you're going to see just a much brighter complexion. Now, one with granules, if you're looking for something with a little granules to it, I love this from Dermatology. It's their microdermabrasion scrub. It really does give you the look of microdermabrasion. I've had that done before. It's pretty pricey. This is affordable. And again, sometimes I don't do my whole face. I'll pick a spot that seems to get a lot of texture more quickly than the rest of my face, like around my mouth. In this line right here, the skin will build up faster. So I'll just take a little of this, go in here and just exfoliate that area or take a little bit and do little circles around the mouth. And that helps to get those fine lines to diminish. I consider lips part of skin. So one thing that I didn't used to do was put any lip products on at night. And as I've gotten older, my lips are definitely a little bit smaller and they get dehydrated more. They never used to be dehydrated. So I have found that using a lip mask at night is just a game changer. When I go to put on my lipstick in the morning or any other lip product, it glides on so smoothly. I love this one from Clavu. It's so moisturizing. It feels like the Tatcha. I probably have most of the lip masks that are made that are very popular. I've tried so many lip masks out, but this one is one of my favorites. Really keeps the lips hydrated. You can even put this on top of your lipstick if you want to add a little moisture instead of a lip gloss. But I am such a fan of lip masks because when your lips look full and they don't look dry, it really improves your overall appearance. My next mistake was having a hairy face. Yes, a hairy face. I didn't realize how much peach fuzz I had on my skin. And that really stops the products from sinking in from your makeup looking good. And when everybody started talking about dermaplaning, 
I went and bought this from Schick. And I've used these for so long and no, the hair does not grow back thicker. I don't notice any change in the hair on my face. I don't do it every week because right now my skin isn't super flaky, but when in the past when I've used products like Tretinoin that made me flake a lot, I would also use this as a little exfoliator. I would just take my finger like this and go over and just flakes would be everywhere. And it was how I got some of that light flakiness off my face. But I even shave my forehead. I will pull my hair back in a ponytail, get all the hair off my face. I will hold my skin very gently like this and at an angle just go and it looks like a tumbleweed. And I especially noticed a lot of peach fuzz in this area over by the ears and even on the chin. So you wouldn't normally see this unless you're in certain light, but boy does it help with skin care, just going into the skin and not sitting on that surface hair. And it especially made my makeup look so much prettier. Another skincare mistake I've made is not always using SPF. I think whether you live in Florida or anywhere else that SPF is really important. There's a lot of debate about that, but I have found one that I love so much that I'm enjoying wearing every day. And that's what most dermatologists will tell you. The one that you love wearing is the best one to wear. Mine is from Alana Mitchell. This is a moisturizer sunscreen that's tinted. So what I've started doing is not using any other moisturizer in the morning. I use this as my moisturizer. It's already got the sunscreen built in. It's a 44 sunscreen and it's water resistant up to 40 minutes. Now I'm not often in the water actually, my face at least. So I find this works great. I've had days when I've gone for walks, no sunburn at all. My skin looks really healthy. So I'm very pleased with this because this has allowed me to go without foundation. I feel so comfortable with this on my skin. I've tried numerous tinted sunscreens and they look orange or no color at all. So this was the first one that I found that just really looks great besides the La Roche-Posay. I was wearing that for a long time, but I like this even better. This has a much more natural look that really blends in with my skin tone. One of the worst things that I did for my skin was streaky makeup, not using tools and really blending my makeup well. It's very aging on the skin when you've got this discoloration from things not being blended or sitting in puddles of your pores. I've had that happen too. So I want to share a few of the beauty tools I love. Recently, I bought this sponge from Real Techniques. It works great. I think it really blends everything well. Of course, my Stands Out sponge I talk so much about and the Delium Double Dome brush. I think this is beautiful for applying foundation. Instead of streaking the foundation like this, I tend to push into the skin and blend it, whether I'm using a brush or a sponge, I sort of pounce it in. That helps eliminate some of the settling in the pores, but I feel like streaky makeup. Yes, I've had my fair share of it. One thing that helped me so much with streaky makeup was buying a 10 times mirror. I don't know what I'd do without my mirror. On one side is a regular mirror and on the other side, it magnifies to 10 times. I use that for doing my eyebrows, seeing makeup clearly. I can't believe what you see in that mirror. I have seen why foundations don't work well. I can see it puddling in my skin and I can really get up close and see what's going on. So I would never be without my lighted mirror. I have noticed that my skin has looked so much better since I've stopped using a heavy foundation. I used heavy foundations to cover up discoloration, acne. I have really piled on the foundation at certain points in my life. And what I've realized is what a horrible mistake that was. Since I started using the Alana Mitchell as my foundation, I've noticed my skin's look so much better. And I think that's in part for the skin just breathing and not having so much makeup on top of the skin. 
So when I am wearing a foundation, I love the True Match. It's so thin. I, my sort of gateway foundation into thin foundation was the MAC Face and Body. And so now as these new products come out, I look for ones that are similar, like the Neutrogena that I've talked so much about. This is the same way. The True Match is super thin, does not look heavy on the skin. I think that also makes my skin look more youthful. Sagging skin is more of a problem for people in my family. A lot of my relatives never had much in the way of wrinkles. It was more sagging. So I don't like a heavy foundation on my skin because I do feel it pulls my skin down and just doesn't make it look as youthful. So one of my biggest mistakes using heavy foundation. One thing I wanted to add is that if I have a heavier foundation that I really like that is pretty on the skin but maybe a little too heavy, I just mix in a setting spray to thin it down. It also improves the longevity of the product or an essence that adds a lot of moisture to it, thins it out, and makes it look much prettier on the skin. One mistake that I made was not taking advantage of oils. I never really used any oils till maybe my 50s. And what I found is oil works great on my skin. I love this jojoba oil. It's organic. I used this when I used my gua sha tool. And that's my other mistake, thinking massaging the face wasn't going to do much for me. That's what I went into it thinking. And when I tried the gua sha, I saw what a difference getting the lymphatic fluid moving around and just the strokes on the face, what it would do for me. So two mistakes I made were thinking oil was no big deal and that gua sha wasn't going to make a difference because the two of these together have been incredible. Another oil that I love that I've repurchased is the Alana Mitchell. This is the Alana Mitchell MCT oil. This is amazing for hydrating the skin, but it not being too oily. I love using it for gua sha, but you can use it on your cuticles, your lips, your hair. It's one of those multitaskers that I love to keep in my pantry. I have one bonus tip for you, and that's consider what you're eating. What we eat has such a huge impact on our skin. I found that out firsthand a couple of years ago. My skin had been very red, and I thought it was just the heat, the humidity, menopause, but then it went out of control, and I broke out all over my face, arms, and legs in a rash. The dermatologist suggested a cream and that was it, but the rash kept coming back. So what I did was I took everything out of my diet and for a couple of weeks ate like just chicken and green beans, something really plain, and reintroduced food one at a time. And I figured out I have an allergy to dairy. And that's what was making my face so red. I had round red circles right here. All of that's gone. Once I got the dairy out of my diet, I drink coconut milk now. I know some people are allergic to coconut, but I try to stay away from really any of those kind of things that are going to infuriate my skin. And what a difference it's made. So if you're struggling with your skin, maybe stop a minute and think, what are you eating? and figure out maybe it could be something as simple as that. All of the links for the products I talked about are in the description of the video. If you just hit the little more button right there, everything will drop down. The links are there. That's what supports my channel. Thank you so much. You are the sponsors of my channel and I appreciate you buying the products you're interested from my store. I love you all so much. I hope you have a blessed week. And let me know if this was helpful. If you'd like more skincare videos, just leave a like or a comment, maybe a question, something you'd like me to talk about in a future video. Have a beautiful week.